And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host Kenneth Grunfelder and it's great to have you guys here on this Monday, May 27th. Happy Memorial Day. We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Before I get into that, just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized, make sure to go to the following link. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker at the bottom of the show segment down below. So let's get into what we are going to talk about for today. So we're going to start off the show by talking about Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Joe Burrow having no limitations in OTAs, recovering from the wrist injury that he suffered last season. So we'll get into that, discuss that at the top of the show here. Then in the second part of the show, I'll continue my schedule breakdown for each team. Today is the Washington Commanders, so I'll go through that as well. Then in the third part of the show, I'll talk about Aaron Rodgers and him expressing confidence in the Jets going into 2024. In the fourth part of the show, we'll talk about the trio of wide receivers for the Titans and the expectations for them going into the 2024 season with Will Levis going into his second year at quarterback. And obviously the trio consists of DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, and Tyler Boyd. And then in the final part of the show, we'll talk about another receiver, uh, Packers wide receiver Christian Watson, coming back from another hamstring injury. And, you know, what he's doing differently this offseason to try to combat those hamstring injuries, because that's something that he's been dealing with ever since he's come into the league. And I will talk about that in the final part of the show. So let's get into the first topic, which is talking about Joe Burrow and the Bengals. So, like I said, uh, Joe Burrow is practicing. There are no limitations for him as we are in OTAs. OTAs under are underway, and he's recovering from the torn ligament in his right wrist. Uh, during OTAs, Burrow has faced no limitations. Like I said, the team, the, the Bengals have designed the practice sessions based on medical advice and on Burrow's preferences. There's no specific pitch counter, if you will, being used to limit Burrow's throws. And like I said, dealt with a, or like I've said on previous shows, he's dealt with. Dealt with a couple of injuries last year. I mean, not only did that happen late in the year, but you had the calf injury, the calf strain. And once he overcame that, the Bengals looked like one of the best teams in the NFL. And it looked like they were going to go on a run. And then Burrow suffers the wrist injury, and that derailed their whole season. But it's really important that he stays healthy because his health dictates what the Bengals can do in 2024. And like I said, there seems to be no limitations, and he's going to be ready to go at the start of the 2024 season. And offensive coordinator Dan Pitcher is pleased with Burrow's recovery, noting his range and power. The Bengals are optimistic optimistic but cautious, emphasizing the importance of keeping Burrow's health healthy for the 2024 season. And the Bengals' record without Burrow since 2020 is 6-8, underscoring his importance to the team and they still finished with a win- winning record despite him getting hurt they went nine and eight jake browning did a nice job but it wasn't enough to make the playoffs and this is what dan pitcher said he said we designed the whole thing to stay within the constraints of where the medical people think he should be and where he wants to be right now nobody's sitting there with a special pitch counter but we've been smart how we put it together so uh, like i said they're encouraged by his throwing and work overall he's got all his range and power Again, that's another thing that the offensive coordinator had to say. So, like I said, his health is going to dictate what the Bengals can do. And if he's not healthy, then, you know, the Bengals can kiss 2024 goodbye. But right now things look good. But, yeah, you got to be cautious because this is your franchise guy. And, you know, not even just from last season, but in previous years, Burrow has dealt with injuries. Um, Obviously, his rookie season. His knee got tore up against the Commanders, well, the Washington football team at the time. And you go, you want to keep this guy healthy. And the offensive line is something that they prioritize in the draft. I mean, they took uh, Amarius Amar- Mims. Or, yeah, they, they took a tackle in the draft, right? That's who it was, Amarius Mims, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. 
So they, they got to protect Joe Burrow. And if he's not protected, well, then he's going to get hurt again. And we'll talk about another quarterback a little later in the show where it's very important that they protect him as well. So, but if Burrow's healthy, I mean, I expect the Bengals to be a team that can go all the way. And I've said it numerous times on the show here, that's the team to look out for when talking about dethroning the Chiefs. Because they've done it before. Now, they lost Tyler Boyd. They let him go. They traded Joe Mixon. So they're going to look a little different. We're still waiting on what's going to happen with T. Higgins and whether he's going to end up getting traded before the season starts or you know, they're going to work something out and he's going to play at least for the 2024 season with the Bengals. I think in the long term, T. Higgins is probably gone, but short term, he could at least be staying with the Bengals for 2024. But we'll have to see. But yeah, they brought in Mike Kosicki, they brought in Zach Moss, pair him up with Chase Brown. So that's your backfield basically going into 2024. And of course you still have Jamar Chase, who is a top five wide receiver. So I, I expect the Bengals to be a very good team with Burrow being healthy. And if he's, if he's not dealing with any nagging injuries going into the year, the Bengals are going to be starting hot right from the jump. So, that's really my thoughts on it. And they're an exciting team to watch. You know, when they started clicking, it was a lot of fun to watch. You know, Jamar Chase with that big game against the Cardinals, three touchdowns. You know, they went into San Francisco and they beat the Niners by a couple scores. They really looked like they were going to go on another run. But then Burrow got hurt. And it was just weird how that all unfolded because going into that Thursday night game, and 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 I've brought this up before, he had like a sling on his arm, but he wasn't on the injury report. And then something in his wrist popped when he threw that touchdown pass to Joe Mixon. And then he was out for the year. It was just very odd how that all unfolded. But it seems like everything is going according to plan. But it's something that they are going to have to continue to monitor. So, and we got Natty Ron in the chat, and he said, "What's good, bro? What's going on? Uh, it's been a it's been a while. I think it was like a couple weeks ago when you were in the chat. This is the year of the Tigers. Yeah, uh, I mean, gotta hope so." Uh, for you guys, um, if you're referring to the the Bengals, not the the Detroit Tigers, because uh, they uh, they were they were playing good, and then they um, they fell off a little bit. Uh, I saw they won like 14 to 11 against the Blue Jays the other day, um, but it's in the script. He said it's in the script on to New Orleans. Burrow Chase return watch. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. The Jungle Bowl. Like I said, uh, before you even join the chat, um, I I mean, I think this is the team that has the best chance to dethrone the Chiefs in the AFC. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to be the team that does it, but that's just my opinion. So Because they've done it before. Uh, I've been good. How you been, bro? I've been good. You know? Um, A little... uh, Dealing with a little bit of a... A cold, uh, if you could probably tell. Uh, but other than that, things have been good. You know, just uh, continuing to uh, talk about football. And we're still in the off season, So we got uh, we still got a while before we get into, you know, focusing on the games coming up in September. But we're going to be in June. Uh, again, the months just fly by. Uh Natty Ron also says, I can see the Bears as a sneaky team this year. I really like the wide receiver they have. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. I really like their trio of wide receivers. They got a lot of expectations. And 
it's you know it's it's going to come down to the quarterback play. They got the team around Caleb Williams. Now you just got to go out there and do it. And I think he will. It's a tough division that he's in, but you know they took him with the number one overall pick. He was good in college. I know people have their complaints about him, but I I think the Bears could be a good team. But like I said, it's a tough division. So we'll see. And he also said JB9 is looking good. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there's no limitations. So as long as that's the case, you got to be encouraged as a uh, as a Bengals fan. So But yeah, that's that's pretty much it we're talking about this. Let me know what you guys think about uh what we just talked about with Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Uh what are your expectations for the Bengals going into the 2024 season. So when we come back from our first break of the show, we're going to talk about the Commanders 2024 schedule. I'll break it down when we come back from break. So with that being said, stick around and we'll be right back here on the GSMC football podcast. <laughs> 